Hello everyone, this is Yusuf from Linbit and in this video I will try to give you an overview about highly available NFS service in the data center and also in the same time between two different data centers. Before I will show you our setup and topology, let me give you a, a little bit information about Limbit HA. So Limbit HA is a high available solution containing two software components, which is a pacemaker and the RVD that we perfected over 20 years. You can use the Limbit highly high available product on all major Linux distributions to ensure highly available uh, high availability of many applications or infrastructures you can use in many cases you can have like um, highly available databases which can be mysql oracle postgre you name it and you can create some file service which can be highly available again in this case, we will discover the NFS, but you can create like Samba, FTP. It depends on what you want. Also, you can create some um, disaggregated storage stacks with DRBD. And um, you can use iSCSI, NVMe, OF, FC, whatever you want. And we are supporting mostly used protocols in the ecosystem and highly high limit ha is actually shining in the application stacks because of this pacemaker integration you can create sap database clusters which we are really good at it and you can create some web servers email servers and many more you basically you see all kind of workloads here that's because the rbd actually is a kernel driver and it sits between um, the file system and the disk itself so it's like a transparent layer it's a kernel driver sits between those two so you can basically have anything on top of file system that is replicated to another node without any problem all right so um, before i jump into uh, my ssh i will try to uh, explain what we did here so we have two data centers. Obviously, I'm using my VMs and all the IPs are local and I'm simulating the, um, the, um, the topology, but you can think about the public IPs and real-time scenarios with that. So we have two data centers. One on the left is Toronto and the one on the right is Montreal. And in each data center, we have two VMs and they are sharing a disk, as you can see here, through VMware, obviously. And the same goes for here. And also, we have another uh, booth arbitrator in another location, uh, apart from Toronto and Montreal, because the booth is an extension to Pacemaker to provide geolocated clusters. It prevents uh, some split brain situations because for instance if you have an outage between toronto and montreal link and montreal will um, try to try to become primary while toronto is already primary there you have a split brain you don't want to so that's why we have a booth arbitrator in a third location a different link between two sides so it will give you a, 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 a power of quorum like um, solution. So, and we installed the RBD in this node. So the RBD is actually replicating the data between Toronto and Montreal. We have an NFS client between two uh, in, in each side, as you can see here. And if something happens on Toronto, the NFS client on the Montreal becomes active uh, because now the Montreal is primary on the RBD site and the pacemaker is already switched all the NFS service to the Montreal and now the 
and um, the NFS client on the module can reach the data, which I will do a demonstration, dem demonstration right away. So we have booth IPs on both sides, and we have another booth like in third location, just like I mentioned. And this is actually a overview of what we have. And let me jump into my SSH and show you what we have done, how it works, and so on. So what we have here. So right now we have client one, client two, and the nodes itself, and one arbitrator node, as you can see. So right now, um, I have a little script in each uh, client, which you can see, it's, it's really simple one. Uh, sorry. Okay, so it's basically like mounting the NFS export and try to put a date and the uh, location mark in it and, and simply echoes that into our shell. So you can see if the uh, client is actively reaching out the data or not. You can see the client one, which is in Toronto, is actively reaching the NFS export and writing the date and time and in each seconds. The first demonstration that I wanted to, to you is to switching over from one node to another because this is what we are covering also. Something can be happen on one node. So we don't want any distur uh, disturbing, um, we don't want any um, disruption in our service. That's why we need a local redundancy also. Since we have a shared VM here, and we, 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 don't, um, we don't have any problem switching from one to another. The only thing that needs to be switched is the DRBD actually. And we installed a, a lot of like pacemaker agents and so on. You can see here, it's, um, we have like some um, node attributes like constraints and so on and so on. All right, let's, uh, let's demonstrate switching from one node to another. To do that, we have a little script here, which is basically demonstrate what we want to do. Let's do it. When I click this one, it's basically stopping the DRVD, but first NFS, obviously, and starts them into the next node. Let's check it from the next node. Um, sorry, it was on CLS2 back then. Now we moved in CLS1, but we can do it again, right? Let's just move from CLS1 to CLS2. And now you can see from here, it's stopped, but it's start in the CLS2. And here, it's started on CLS2. And you can see here on the client side, there is a gap between the switchover. It's like a 19 seconds or 18 seconds each. So it's not in, in here, for instance, it's even lower. And you will have this switchover in 19 seconds if you are, um, putting uh, that command over the um, SSH. We have like, <clears throat> we have like also the uh, timeouts in the system. So you can um, define pacemaker if you want pacemaker to do an automatic failover in X seconds. You can say if something happens on the CLS1, then switch over to CLS2 in 10 seconds. This is what you what we can arrange in the system. But right now, for this demonstration, I'm doing this manual uh, process. Now we uh, demonstrate from one node to another. Let's demonstrate between the sites because we also have the Montreal, right? We are now in Toronto, but we also have in Montreal. So let's switch to the Montreal. We also have another um, command for that, which is a, um, sorry, let me just close this one. Okay, so this one is not a uh, node switch over, this one is now site switch over. And when we do that, obviously it will say Toronto is active. Now we have to define the site, which is Montreal. 
when we did that let's check the pacemaker on cls2 you can see everything like nfs and everything is stopped and let's check the cls3 it's already started here and the client one is now stopped doing anything but instead client two which is in montreal is now writing and you can clearly see here the last timestamp is from toronto which is 28 and after 20 seconds it switched over to montreal this is this is this is in, really good it's like in 20 seconds you just switch the nfs from one location to another and now everything is working in cls3 and we can clearly see in the first side the uh, volume group is up and running ip for the heartbeat is up and running but the drbd is on slave in cls2 because it's also master in cls3 so right now drbd is replicating data between cls3 and cls2 and from cls2 with a shared disk it's actually replicating to cls1 because it says it's a shared disk underneath the drbd device so yeah this is pretty much it and um, this is what i wanted to demo today for a more detailed version of this demo and uh, for the for more details like configuration files and so on please reach us and we are happy to help you out thank you for listening thank you for watching and see you in another video another demo goodbye